economic uh, evaluation is a tool that helps us uh, make choices. So let's say the choice is between two alternatives, A versus B. How should we decide what to do? Now there's a, you know, lots of different choices like that and it may make sense to look at it at uh, some examples. Um, first of all, you could have a choice between how much you want to invest in different sectors. Let's say the housing versus health. How much should I invest in this? At a more detailed level, you could choose between how much to invest within different sectors of health. So how much should I invest in heart surgery compared to hip replacement, for example. But even within this, it's more, and there's a more detailed choice. Even within hip replacement, for example, uh, what kind of intervention should I choose? Should I go for screws or prosthetics, for example? So you have different interventions even within. And the way I'm going to present the economic evaluation is mainly about number two and three here. It's not so much about number three, but it's possible to go there as well. Now, after giving some examples, you might ask, why should I do an economic evaluation? And there are like two answers to that. First of all, um, you're required to do so by law sometimes. Um, so the law tells you to do it. So for example, when you introduce a new pharmaceutical to the market, in some countries you have to present an economic evaluation in order to get reimbursed. But that's the boring reason. The more interesting reason is it's, it's um, actually the moral or rational thing to do, given that we have scarce resources, we should try to make the most of that out of those resources. Um, and economic evaluation helps us to do that. So it's the rational or moral thing to do. Okay, so um, before we go into the details of different types of economic evaluations and, and things like that, let's take a step back and look at how we make decisions. So far I've said that we have to make a decision between A and B, and we should use economic evaluation. But let's go back and see what kind of ways are there to make a decision, and um, how to decide. Well, first of all, the most intuitive way is just as we explained to look at the net benefits, look at the pluses and the minuses of the consequences and choose the alternative with the highest plus compared to the negatives. Um, and that's basically what we're doing in the economic evaluation. But before we go in and explain that in more detail, we should actually be aware that there are some options. Uh, not all of them are stupid. For example, um, you could use your norms not look at the consequences, but just choose whatever the norm tells you to choose. For example, um, who should get a lifeboat? Well, women and children first. You don't look at the consequences, that's just a rule. So that's possible. Um, a third possibility would be to go with your gut feelings. Should I choose A or B? Well, what do I feel like? I'm not saying it's wise, but it's just a logical possibility at least. Fourth, it's possible just to choose at random. And sometimes that's not as stupid as it sounds, because um, you can avoid a lot of problems by doing so. For example, who should go to the army when there's a war? Well, let's choose them at random. But these are just background alternatives. The one main thing we're focusing on now is, is um, this alternative here, the pluses and the minuses. We're going to choose based on the consequences. And you can call it utilitarianism if you want, or consequentialism. Uh, but that's how we're going to go in this uh, overview. Um, in order to do so, we actually need some assumptions. Um, and slightly to be slightly more formal, um, we have to assume that there is such a thing that's called utility. And if you do A, uh, do select an option A, for example, then one person has a utility from A, and it will get a utility from the consequences of B. And now the question is, which one will give you the highest utility? But when we work out uh, the consequences in economic evaluation, usually we're not just concerned about one individual, we're concerned about the consequences for all individuals. So we work out the social welfare of doing A. Social welfare of doing A, which would be the sum 
of all the utilities for all different people of the consequences of doing A. You see, immediately we introduce some assumptions there. First of all, that there is such a thing as utility. And secondly, that it has a nature, which means um, it has to be possible to add the utilities from different person. And this this is not immediately obvious in the sense that can I take your happiness and add that to another person's happiness and get a sum? But this is what we have to assume. Okay, so given that we want to do something like that, um, what kind of approaches are there to economic evaluation? More specifically, the types of economic evaluation. Um, types. Well, first of all, we have something called cost-effectiveness analysis. The cost-effectiveness analysis. Um, and in this analysis, you measure the benefits in terms of their natural units. Okay. For example, the number of lives saved or, or reduction in blood pressure, things like that. Um, and this is uh, used quite often. The problem with it is that it only measures consequences in one dimension. So, for example, the number of lives saved. Um, it doesn't measure, for example, the quality of those lives. So if you want to do that, you have to go on to what we call the cost utility analysis. And in this analysis, you would measure the consequences or the benefits in terms of, um, for example, qualis, quality adjusted to life years. And it, you just multiply the number of years you get from that intervention with the quality of the lives in those years. So, for example, in this diagram here, we have time on this axis and the quality of the lives in the, on this axis. And let's say you have an intervention that will bring you up to um, this level here for this amount of time. So the benefits of that intervention would be this area. Let's say it's five. Okay, that's five qualities from this intervention. Given that it produces this quality for this amount of time. So now you, now you have captured both the quality and the time dimension here. Now, this is a perfectly acceptable method in the sense that um, it captures more than uh, just one dimension. Um, it's still not suitable if you want to compare, for, let's say, housing and health, because then you have to measure everything in the same unit, and investments in housing does not really produce a quality of just the life years. So then you have to... Um, go to a third method, which is called the cost-benefit analysis. And in this method, you take all the consequences. You don't measure the consequences in terms of health-related quality, but you measure the consequences in money. So all the consequences have to be um, converted into money. And this is a challenge, of course. Um, but this is the theory. So which one should you choose? Well, that depends, of course. It depends, first of all, on uh, the amount of information you have and can get. Just, it's easier to measure something or to use this method because you don't need that much information. You need information about cost, measured in money, and effectiveness. And both of them are difficult to get sometimes, but it's even more difficult to get information about quality of lives, for example. And it's even more difficult to convert those consequences into money. So it depends on how much information you have. It also depends on your aim, of course. If your aim is to make a choice between um, housing and health, you just have to use cost-benefit analysis because you need, them, need answers in the same unit. And finally, it depends on the nature of the intervention, because um, sometimes the intervention will just give you one type of consequence. You don't really have to worry about lots of different dimensions, nature of the consequences. And that's it. And the next lecture will be about uh, how to measure quality and how to convert things into money. But this was enough for today.